Defying all expectations, she changed the world through her bravery and undercover investigative reporting. She was Nellie Bly. She was the voice for those who couldn't speak for themselves. As a journalist from 1885 to 1895, she uncovered scandals, exposed horrible working conditions for the poor, was an advocate for women, and made a historic 72-day trip around the world that brought her fame. However, the assignment that launched her career was a 10-day journey into the world of the mentally ill at an insane asylum on Blackwell Island in New York City. Before she was Nellie Bly, she was Elizabeth Jane Cochran from Cochran Mills, Pennsylvania. Elizabeth was born May 5, 1864, the daughter of Mary Jane and Michael Cochran. When Elizabeth was at the young age of six, her father passed away, leaving Elizabeth's mother with no house, very little money, and five children to raise. She soon remarried an abusive man who gambled away the little money they had. Elizabeth wanted to help out the family, so she went to college to earn a teaching degree. However, her family could not financially keep her in college, so she dropped out and started running a boarding house with her mother. A few years later, an article was printed at the Pittsburgh Dispatch. The article was written by Erasmus Wilson and claimed that women belonged in the home, conducting domestic duties such as raising children, cooking, and cleaning. He called the working woman a monstrosity. This triggered an angry reply from Elizabeth, who signed it Little Orphan Girl. Her response refuting the article claimed many women are forced to work to afford the bare necessities of life. The article continued on to speak about the different male and female job opportunities and the unfair gender pay gaps. Elizabeth's reply landed her a writing job at the Pittsburgh Dispatch. She was given the pen name Nellie Bly. This was the start of an extremely challenging career path. During this time, there were very few women reporters, so it was hard for Bly to gain any respect. She was put on the women's page, writing news about social events, flowers, and clothing. She claimed, I was too impatient to work along at the usual duties assigned women on newspapers. Because of this injustice, Bly quit her job at the Pittsburgh Dispatch. She left a note on the editor's desk saying, I'm off for New York, look out for me, Bly. In a time when other women would comply with men's expectations, this note shows how confident Bly was and how brave she was to stand up for what she believed she deserved. In New York, she tried to find a job at one of the many news companies by going door to door until she finally was offered a job at Joseph Pulitzer's The New York World. She was to go undercover to investigate the infamous Women's Lunatic Asylum on Blackwell Island under the guise of an insane woman. This stunt launched her into the limelight, and also shone a light on the terrible conditions under which the mentally ill lived. Until the 1800s, most people with mental illness were cared for by their families in rural areas. But with the growth of cities, more people began to fear the mentally ill. This led to asylums being created to keep them away from the public. By the end of the 1800s, many of these places had deteriorated, and conditions were awful. One of the worst was Blackwell Island. Before her escapade, she made a plan to act crazy in order to get herself committed. She practiced in front of the mirror, trying to gain a crazy look. Far away expressions look crazy, she wrote. She stayed up late to seem delirious. After all this preparation, she checked into a woman's boarding home as Nellie Brown. I began to have smaller regard for the ability of doctors. I felt sure now no doctor could tell whether people were insane or not. Blackwell Asylum was the first lunatic asylum for the city of New York. It was completed in 1839, but before that, patients were housed in the basement and first floor of the building previously used as a prison. The hospital was plagued by scandal. There were frequent outbreaks of disease, underfunding, overcrowding, and deplorable conditions. Convicts from the nearby prison were even hired as attendants. Another shocking fact is that 80% of the committed were immigrants. Sane women who were committed because they couldn't make themselves understood to the doctors. Even Nellie Bly pretended to be from Cuba in order to be more easily judged insane. At Blackwell Island, conditions were horrendous. Food was spoiled, the rooms were unsanitary, women were choked, beaten, and harassed by the nurses and guards. They lived in a state of filth, squalor, and fear. They had no warm clothes and were given ice-cold baths. Nellie Bly described her experience with these words. 
My teeth chattered, and my limbs were goose-fleshed and blue with cold. Suddenly, I got one after the other, three buckets of water over my head, ice-cold water, too, into my eyes, my ears, my nose, and my mouth. I think I experienced the sensation of a drowning person, as they dragged me, gasping, shivering, and quaking from the tub. For once, I did look insane. In the 1880s, doctors thought mental illness was caused by a problem with the nervous system, not in the brain. So the doctors treated the patient's bodies with water therapy, electrical simulation, or rest. At Blackwell Island, the women were kept in forced rest and silence. Nellie Bly would later write, What accepting torture would produce insanity quicker than this treatment? Take a perfectly sane woman and healthy woman, shut her up and make her sit from 6 a.m. until 8 p.m. on straight back benches. Do not allow her to talk or move during these hours. Give her no reading and let her know nothing of the world or its doings. Give her bad food and harsh treatment and see how long it will take to make her insane. Two months would make her a mental and physical wreck. Nellie Bly didn't two months. After ten days, the newspaper sent a lawyer to get her out. She was luckier than most. At first, she described the asylum as a human rat trap. Easy to get in, but once there, impossible to get out. Once out, she described her time in the asylum. These ten days were depicted in a series of newspaper reports in the New York world. Her expose was later published as a book called Ten Days in a Madhouse. Her expose drew attention to Blackwell Island. It also drew attention to her and jump-started her famous career as a journalist. However, the fame was not what she was after. I have one consolation for my work, she wrote. On the strength of my story, the Committee of Appropriation provides one million dollars more than was ever given for the benefit of the insane. She later led a group back to Blackwell, where she happily was able to report that things had taken a turn for the better. Nellie Bly was one of the biggest advocates during the late 1800s for anyone who didn't have a voice. At a time when the Statue of Liberty was being built to welcome all to America, the promises of the Declaration of Independence were being denied to some. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. By her words and actions, Nellie Bly defended the rights of others and stood up for people who couldn't defend themselves.